Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for uh, this Saturday, December uh, 3rd. It is going to be a long, late night card for those who are inclined to stay up and sweat it. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time, and it is a 15 fight card. Um, as of this moment, all fights are on and all have salaries. And so if you play this card, be in for a long night or um maybe you bust out early and don't have to worry about the late fights which is actually kind of interesting because probably the the most exciting fight of the night is probably the fourth to last fight like the last three fights which are supposed to, supposed to be the three kind of main events probably three of the more boring fights of the entire card which is kind of interesting um so if you're already falling asleep the last three fights might very well put you to sleep if, in, if you're not already live for something big um so in a 15 fight card in general, you know, uh, you're going to need a lot of points. I mean, just the way the math kind of works out. I mean, there's just going to be, um, there's just going to be, uh, there's just going to be knockouts. There's just going to be a lot of, <laughs> a lot of scoring. There's going to be a lot of submissions. There's all kinds of stuff that's going to happen. Um, and you're just not going to be able to get away with going six for six and, and hoping that, you know, your decision wins kind of, kind of pull it out for you. Okay. It's just, it's just not the way it's going to be. So that's the way you have to kind of look at a slate like this is really try to figure out who has ceiling and who can finish and who can score. Um, now, again, you don't need to finish to score, but if you're not going to be able to finish, you you have to be able to, generate a, a an incredible amount of, of takedown upside and, and ground and pound upside. Okay. Um, so with that said, we're going to, we're going to approach the slate from that context. And one of the things that we do talk about quite a bit in, in DFS uh, in NBA slates, for example, is try to make um, uh, a large, large slates small. So even if you want to play 150 lineups, I think it's probably a good idea to um, it's probably a good idea to X out some fights and just kind of take some stands. And that's just what you're going to have to do. Um, when I say take some stands, uh, yes, obviously that means Xing out fights, but also kind of X taking stands on kind of similar looking fights, um, and that's just what you're going to have to do if you're going to play this slate. Um, so let's just start right from the bottom. Uh, first fight of the night uh, is, is one that we can probably get rid of right away. Um, it is uh, Yasmin versus Istel and Nunez. And you have a 9,300 fighter against a 6,900 fighter. And for a 9,300 fighter, you need to have, I mean, in my opinion, either an inside the distance prop where you are, you know, even money to finish or a massive amount of takedown upside um, to pay off a $9,300 price tag. And uh, Yasmin has neither. I mean, you look at her inside the distance prop, which I have on the left side over here. I mean, her inside the distance is um, plus 260 or something. And when I say, when I say plus 260, what I try to do is kind of split the difference with this VIG. Um, to give you a, a decent idea of what the odds actually are. So um, I, I think that is just a terrible play. And look, if it was a shorter slate and you look to be different and stuff like that, obviously she's going to be, I imagine, significantly less than 10% owned. I mean, a 15 fight card with late swap where you want to, you know, air towards later fights anyway, with this inside the distance, problem, I can't imagine people playing her. And I'm going to be one of those people that don't play her. Um, and when you have Nunez, uh, well, she's plus two, at plus plus 270, 6,900. But again, even if you're going to try to get a win out of 6,900, it's still, um, you, you st I still think you need even, you still need more than just a decision. Okay. Um, that's just, that's just what I believe. So um, I don't think that she's in play either. Um, Hold on a minute. One second. 
I'll have to pause this for just a moment. Pick up the pause it. Yeah. Sorry. So the next fight on the card is is a is a great action fight. You have uh, Francis Marshall against Marcelo Rolo. Um, 8,800, 7,400. We'll take a look at the inside distance props here. And first of all, you see Mar Marshall is him winning inside the distance is it's not bad. It's it's maybe he's like plus 160 or something like that. And for that price, that's pretty good. But you also add in the fact that he's got quite a bit of takedown upside, um, as you know noted by his recent performances. That that combines to be a very very strong uh, GPP play. Um, uh, so this is he's he's a he's significantly better than Yasmin and a very very good play overall. Um, and on the other hand, you have Rojo, who is one of I would say three or four, like maybe four or five, but certainly three or four, very, very, I don't want to say live, but he, he's competing for the best underdog spot. There's one guy who is, who is clearly for me, the best underdog spot, but um, there are three that are competing for that role. And, and Rojo is certainly one of them. Um, his inside the distance prop is, is seems a little, seems a little light. Um, Rojo inside the distance. Was it plus? plus 300 or something like that. Rojo inside the distance. Why is it so hard to find this? Rojo scorecards, no action. Rojo by decision, we have that. Rojo inside the distance. So it's like plus 300, which is, which is fair enough, you know, and you, you'll see him being compared to other guys that we'll talk about who's very similar, similar price tag and plus 300. I mean, his price on DraftKings is 7,400. So a plus 300 is, is very reasonable for, for this type of price. And he actually has a, a, you know, a little bit of takedown and wrestling upside himself. Um, you know, so combination of all that renders him a very strong underdog not to mention the fact that marshall because of everything that i said is going to rate out to be a pretty good play so if you do play rojo you're going to get a little bit of leverage off of people that play uh that play marshall so um i think all of this combines for rojo being a very very live underdog as far as gpps go and uh what that means is that you probably want to get a good part of this fight um kind of right off the bat now i should have talked about this beforehand but this is purely a dfs uh, video i'm going to be doing a uh a betting video just actually probably right following this and you'll see that the approach is just completely different okay i might have have guys in that video that have nothing to do with who i like in dfs and that's kind of what makes dfs kind of cool um all right moving on we have Valdez versus Netan Levy, and boy, oh boy, if that second fight wasn't enough to get to 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 get you juiced up, uh, this next one is going to be awesome. Um, similar type price tag. I mean, when we get to like some of these, you're going to get to these like 9,400, 9,500 fighters, and you're going to want to play them. But when you look back at some of these 8,800, 8,900 guys, you could end up making the case that these guys are just as good. Um, this is going to be another just really heavy action fight. Valdez is is a madman. He'll come out just swinging wildly. He'll he'll he'll, he'll be ready to be hit. And, and Levy has has you know he puts on a really really good pace in his last fight. I think he must have had nine takedowns or something like that. And what's his name? His opponent Valdez has some takedowns in his arsenal as well. So this fight is just as all kinds of action just waiting to be had. And when we look at the internals here, we look at the numbers, you have Levy himself inside the distance is almost a pick -em. you know, and, and I was saying that that was a good price to have for if you're like 9,200, even without wrestling upside, but him, he's only 8,900 and he also has immense wrestling upside. This is, this is a super strong play of Levy. Um, 
And like I said, you look at Valdez, Valdez inside the distance. Um, he is going to be, um, again, plus 300, which is very, very reasonable. Very similar to Rojo. Valdez has also very similar, like kind of like maybe some wrestling upside. And again, what I said, Levy is going to rate out to be a very, very good play, which means he's probably going to get owned, which means that Valdez is probably very strong you know, leverage if, in fact, he can get that, get the job done. So um, right off the bat, two of the first three fights are really, really strong. Um, as a matter of fact, just for fun, let's just kind of put these guys in just to remind ourselves of what's going on here as we kind of move up the card. We'll just put the two favorites. Actually, we'll put both of them in. We'll put in both underdogs and both favorites just to remind ourselves of what's what's happening here. All right, so we move on to Tracy Cortez versus Amanda Hibas. And this is a very tempting fight because of the because of a couple of things. Number one, because of the price. Um, whenever you have an 8208 8, k fight, it really makes the rest of your lineups work. You know, if, if you don't play these 8208 k fights, what ends up happening is that you end up, you know, forcing yourself to have like sometimes three you know, underdogs win. And when I say underdogs, I, I don't mean the, the 7,900, you know, plus 110 underdog. I mean, like these, you know, these guys we just talked about, these guys that are plus 200 or plus 180. And it's tough to get three of those guys to win. So these these 8Ks become very, very interesting fights and interesting decision points. And so you have Hibas against Cortez, and you, you won't have a good inside the distance prop here. As, as obviously with most women's fights, you don't have the greatest inside the distance prop. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll take a look at it just to fight doesn't go to decision. It's like, you know, minus 240. I mean, this is he boss plus 400. I mean, these are, these are, these are all really, really bad. So, but what you do have is possible grappling upside. I would say more wrestling upside on the Cortez side of the, of, of the, of the ledger. Um, this is really her path to victory here. And the, the question is, is Cortez getting a win with wrestling upside at 8K enough to make the optimal lineup? Now, again, we have to think about what, what you're playing here, right? If you're playing like cash games or say even three max or single entry, I think a play like Cortez makes a lot of sense. You know, because I think in her win condition involves like her win condition involves takedowns. So when she wins, probably going to get 85 points, you know, um, 85 points at 8K is pretty good in single entry. But in these lotteries, it's just almost it's almost irrelevant, you know, so you have to figure out what you're what, what you're kind of trying to play here. Um I think that in 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 MME, this is the time when you're looking to literally like take down the whole cheese against like thousands of people. I don't think that she rates the score enough points to make that work in a 15 fight card. Just the way the math works, you're just gonna get some underdogs winning, you know, and 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 you're gonna get like a lot of fantasy points in general. And I just don't think that the 80 an 85 point win at the 8K level is just going to make it. And remember, that only happens about half the time because she's about an even money, you know, uh, you know, even money in here. So in MME, I probably end up getting underweight. As a matter of fact, if you really want to do something funny, you can, you can X out this fight. Now, when you do that, you, you end up getting most every combination of those of those um of those underdogs that we'll talk about. Um, maybe you don't need it for, for 150 lineups, um, but maybe you do. Um we're gonna get to an other examples of this 8K fight, uh, specifically the main event that will that will compare to this one. One thing I will say if you want to compare this one to say the main event, actually the price is a little different. It's not exactly the greatest comparison. We'll we'll get to another example of this a little later. But this 8K fight for me on a 15 fight slate is usually not going to be 
I mean, unless unless there's a lot of of, of finishing equity, just don't think that that Cortez at 8K is just going to be enough. If she could mix in takedowns with ground and pound, that kind of like increases the fantasy upside. But it just it just once again single entry Cortez decent play, um, and then the maybe not maybe not the greatest. Um, and he boss, I think similarly, I, I think that in, in single entry, I mean, look, you know, you, you, you want to save money and playing these 8k fights is, is not bad. And he boss has some submission upside, you know, she could get a couple of takedowns on her own. She could, she can get, you know, 80 set 90. I mean, you know, she could get there, but I think that in MME, I think, I think the fight is probably a pass. Um, but that's, that's, that's my take. So now we go up to uh, Jonathan Pierce versus Darren Elkins. So this one is this one is is something you're gonna have to deal with because Jonathan Pierce he he has a path to victory that he actually has demonstrated in, very recently. So what that means is that number one, it's in play, and number two, everybody sees that's in play. Um, fortunately, it's not incredibly easy to play him because he's 9,500. And this is what I'm talking about. You look at the inside the distance prop. Remember, 9,500, what do you need? You need, I mean, I would say, you can't, I wouldn't even say that, that even money to finish is good enough. Okay. I think that you need maybe even minus 200 to finish on a card like this. Or maybe even money to finish plus plus takedown ground and pound like hundred uh, like 120 130 point type of upside. And the thing is is that Pierce kind of has this right. When you look at his, his even his even his last fight, I mean this is exactly what you look for. You have whoa, why is this uh it's not big enough? I can't, oh there it is. Um, why can't I see this whole thing? Um, it's really weird, but Jonathan Pierce in his last fight, he had four takedowns, a million strikes, got 125 fantasy points. I mean, it's, he is, he is that dude, you know? Um, however, you know, two fights before that, he did get six takedowns and three fights before that, six takedowns, five takedowns. I mean, this is, this is precisely the guy or the type of guy that you want um, if you're at 9,500. I mean, this is what you have to have. Um, when you look at his inside the distance prop, it's actually not that great. You have here's inside the distance is actually, it is pretty good, minus 110. So this is what you need. The combination of the inside the distance and all this takedown ground and pound pace upside. So of all these 9,400, 9,500s, I mean, this is this is the this is the dude I think that that you'll want to play. Um, is it going to be easy to play him? No, ninety five hundred is rough business, man. And are there paths for him to fail? Sure. I mean, you know, Elkins has Elkins takes a lot of abuse. He's been around the block. He can grapple a little bit himself. And I will tell you this: like, this is the way it works. Like, if Elkins gets a takedown and say the first round somehow, and he could, and then kind of just lays on him for a little bit. Pierce can't get up somehow. If Pierce gives up one round like that, um, it's tough. But then again, I think about it, and his, his last fight, he was almost getting subbed in the first round. And he ended up in one round, basically scoring 130 fantasy points. Um, so I think I think Pierce is a guy you kind of want to play. Um, are there paths to failure? Sure. Um, but I, um, you know, the only thing that's going to stop him from being in my lineups is lineup construction. And as you'll see, I think we do get you do get um you do get enough underdogs to pick from where I think you can make it work. Um, now on the other side of this, uh, Elkins, it's kind of weird to say, but I I don't know if even in a in a win he kind of does it. You know, I've heard a lot of takes, and you know what? I'm gonna I'll talk about that more when we do the uh, the betting breakdown. I think, um, but Elkins has a reputation for being able to survive. A lot, you know, being able to survive, survive a lot of stuff. 
Um, and if he could survive this and get kind of to the end and, and kind of, you know, turn the tables on the cardio, um, it's possible. I mean, it's certainly possible, but at 6,900, ah, he's going to need a third round finish. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's going to be able to get it done with a decision. I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, So that's kind of, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at here. Let's see something. Okay. Um all right, moving on. We have Michael Johnson against Mark D. Casey. Boy, this this card, this this DFS score, I mean the more I look at this you can't play these eight Ks. It's just no way. I mean, you're going to have to, I mean, you're, you're going to need, a, a, what are you going to need? 700. I mean, at least 600. I, mean, I would say 650 is on the, in the cards. Cause there's so many fighters that have kind of funny upside. So let's look at this fight. DKC against Mark Johnson. Um, Mike, Michael Johnson against Michael Johnson. Um, Okay, so first of all, DK is a minus three hundred favorite. Price probably should be a little bit bigger price. If you want to know the truth, um, I've neglected to mention that Pierce is by the way is minus five hundred. Um, so you look at the inside the distance propping it. So what do you need for ninety two hundred? You need at the very least an inside the distance prop of, of even money. I think, especially on a card like this, um, or Probably at least that, but preferably that plus takedown upside, or at the very least, takedown and ground and pound upside. So here's the deal. The inside the distance prop on DKC is pretty poor, um, I think. Him inside the distance plus 300. So so why is, why is he a play? Well, if you look at his game log or his fight log, you look at his last two fights, he's got eight takedowns and 11 takedowns. Ouch. Um, and and th this is the way you get it done, right? Um, what he does not have, though, is the ground impact. Okay. He does he is not very active when he gets the takedowns, he gets the takedowns and then he just kind of, um, then he kind of just kind of like, I don't want to say lays there, but he controls them. He, listen, he does what he, what's needed to win. Right. But, um, you compare him to Pierce, right. And, and Pierce just really just kind of puts on a much faster pace. He lays the wood and he's just a much better play than DK um, so I think that Dia Casey is going to be second here for me. Um, the other thing I would mention is that, you know, his last two fights, he had 10 takedowns, but his two fights before that, well, one of them, he got subbed, so he didn't have a chance. And then he fought Fiziev, who's just awesome. Um, aside from that, yeah, he did have six takedowns once before. KO, KO. So it looks as though the fights he doesn't get takedowns it's for kind of a reason um so he's gonna get his uh what about michael johnson all right let's take a look at michael johnson on the other side he's just big enough of a favorite not favorite you know i mean plus 250 which means probably plus 300 plus 280 he's got to have a really good inside the distance prop for me to play him and it says Johnson inside of this, he's like plus 900. I, I just can't do it. Um, the only thing I would say is that maybe Johnson is just kind of good enough to stuff the takedowns, maybe. I don't know. It, it, I, I feel as though what this what's going to happen in this fight is that, you know, we'll get two takedowns, one round, one takedown, another round, one takedown, another round, four takedowns, not too much ground and pound in the decision. Is that good enough? I honestly don't know. Um, his last two fights, he put up 113 and 119. Is 113 good enough at 9,200 on this, on this card? I don't know. 
119, I have to say it is, right? Is 113? I guess. Not all the time, but but I guess. But again, this was like everything going his way against two guys that literally cannot stuff takedowns at all. What what does his score look like if he gets four takedowns? Well, you subtract, what is it, five, about five points for a takedown? Then you're busting pretty much at 9,200. If I told, if, if I said to Mark D.K., said, listen, I'm going to get your four takedowns in the decision, would you take it? He's like, sure, let's go. So um, I think he's second tier for me. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to play him if I play 150 just because. But um, I guess the, the most important thing here is that I, I just can't get to Michael Johnson. He just doesn't have the, t- the, the inside the distance prop to kind of make it work. And the other thing is that, is that, is that Dia Casey's not going to be popular enough for me to like make the leverage case. I mean, he's not going to be as popular as Pierce. He's not going to be as popular. I don't think as Levy, you know what I mean? Or as, or as Marshall even, you know, those are, those are two heavy duty scorers that are, that are in the offing here. So I don't know. All right, moving on. Uh, we have, um, who do we have? We have, Clay Guida against Scott Holtzman. Just don't do it. Um, one fifth in 150 lineups. I, I just have to, I have to X something out. And, and, and you look at the inside the distance props on these two guys, you have fight doesn't go decision is like minus 150 or something. You have Holtzman. Well, if there's any one that, that I would go with, you have Guida, Guida inside the distance is literally plus 900. It's kind of, kind of bizarre. So you do have Holtzman inside the distance. It's like plus two sixty. I mean, at eighty six hundred, I'm just gonna find the money for Levy or Marshall. You know what I mean? Like it, it's just, it's it's just gonna be a pass. You know, I just don't think I can do it. One thing I would say, I mean, I wonder what about Gita at plus 900 and you know, we'll talk about this bet in, in betting. Um, but uh, I think that look, Holtzman's going to be low owned. That's the one thing I'll say. Um, and if he does get this finish, I guess he could get a hundred. Maybe he's got to do it in the first round or two. All right. If I play 150 and, and I can get everything else I want, I'll, I'll take a sliver of Holtzman if I get to him just because of the ownership. But um, aside from that, no thanks and no thanks to Guida. All right, moving on. Uh, all right. Emily Zaccotti versus Angela Hill. All right. So this one, I don't know whether I want to do this as part of the betting breakdown or as the, um, as the uh, DFS breakdown, but this is, this is what I will say about this fight. The, the inside the distance prop is 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 kind of atrocious, right? Angela Hill, uh, she tends to go everything by decision. Let's take a look at how this works. Uh, inside the distance, we have Hill inside the distance is plus eight million. Even Dakota inside the distance is plus six hundred. Okay, so so the only thing I would say is Dakota, um, she is does have some wrestling that she could go to. She has power and she does have some wrestling that she, she, she could go to. If you want a really just like low owned, like anti-recency bias play, I, I can, I can get to some Dakota and this is why. So Angela Hill fought Lupita Godinez in her last fight. And the entire civilized world was on Godinez. They thought all she had to do was go take Angela Hill down, whatever it is. And Godinez could do nothing. Whether she didn't choose to go for them or Angela Hill's takedown defense was was particularly good. Um, I think if you watch that fight, I think it it's, was more that Godinez didn't really even try. You know, I don't think that she like went for takedowns and Hill stuffed them. You watch the fight again. It seemed as though... Eudinius had literally no interest in trying it. So I don't know why, I don't know, whatever. But um, I think that the case can be made that Ducote has sort of a, I mean, this has got to be low-owned stuff. You know what I mean? Like 
she's got to be able to get multiple takedowns at 8,300. And you know what? No good. I mean, I'm not doing it. I, I, I try to think this through. And, and even, even in MME, even at low ownership, what is she going to get? I mean, even if I'm right, and even if she does go for takedowns and gets everything, she's going to need to get four, like four, three, four takedowns and, and a submission probably in the second round. I mean, that's probably pretty good. Has Angela Hill ever, ever been submitted? I mean, no. I mean, it's, it's just a pass. It's just a pass. I thought about it. I'm trying. I'm trying to make this case for the win the hundred thousand with Emily Decody, but can't. I'm probably going to end up doing it, but but right now it's probably not the greatest idea in the world. All right, uh, Nico Price versus Phil Rowe action. We have Nico Price eighty four hundred, uh, Phil Rowe seventy eight hundred. Let's take a look at the inside the distance props here. You have fight doesn't go to decision minus two hundred. Pretty much, let's go. Um, let's see how this breaks down. You have price inside the distance is is like plus one sixty, which is pretty freaking good at that price at eighty four hundred. And then you have row inside the distance is, is worse. He's plus two forty, um, plus two forty at seventy eight hundred. Well, is that that much worse than say the plus three hundred at seventy two hundred for those other guys? Um. I think it's very similar, actually. So I think that both of these fighters have incredible upside here. Um, you know, Rice uh, Price, you know, he takes damage. He doesn't mind. He provides action. Roe is not exactly known for that, but I don't think Roe's going to be able to help it. You know, like if Price, you know, decides to do do Price things, you know, he's going to, Roe's going to have to respond. And Roe does have a huge reach advantage and he's very big. And I, th I think someone... Is going to get knocked out. I think that the, the the line reflects that, and the price is is very reasonable. So I think both these fighters are very live in GPPs, and I would I would definitely go after this fight. Jack Hermanson versus Roman Delice. Um, Okay, we have wait not yet. We have Eric Anders versus Kyle Dawkins. All right, so Kyle Dawkins ninety one hundred. So again, what are we looking for? Either about even money to finish or maybe I mean, a little maybe like plus 120 even at that price um or significant takedown upside slash um ground and pound upside things like that let's take a look uh Dawkus inside the distance um plus 240 pretty poor what about the takedown upside um I mean, not really. You know what I mean? Well, his last fight, he got KO'd, right? So that didn't count. Took down Jamie Pickett three times. Jamie Pickett's terrible. Um, three in the first round, I mean, that's good. So he basically took him down once, right? Um, Holland's, I don't know, Kevin Holland, one takedown. He was doing well in that actual, actual fight, actually. One takedown against Hawes, I guess that's okay. So he's got some takedowns, but it's not that that multiple takedown, four prongs, you know what I mean, stuff that we're used to. Um, against Pickett, yeah, he had the round one sub, gave him 118, you know, whatever. But the Stolzfus fight with the two takedowns, the 91, that's not going to be enough, man. I, I think Dawkins is going to be my full fade. Um, you got you to gotta face somebody. And, and, and I think Dawkins is my full fade. I, I prefer to Casey, for example, to, uh, to Dawkins. So uh, Dawkins is going to be my full fame. And Anders just has a very poor inside the distance prop. He's plus 700. And again, Dawkins is not going to be particularly popular. So you don't get that kind of leverage. So uh, that, that's what I'm doing over here. Um, I'm going to probably just fade this whole fight. Um, all right, moving on. We have Jack Hermanson versus Roman Delice. 8,700 uh, against 7,500. Where is Hermanson? All right, let's take a look at the inside distance. Hermanson inside the distance is, they don't really list these in the correct order. Hermanson inside the distance is basically plus 300, which is obviously extremely poor for an 8,700 fighter. 
Um, he's going to need to have like significant takedown upside in addition to this, this, this inside the distance prop to justify his price. Um, and when you look at it, I mean, it's, it's not the best. Okay. Um, he, he does have takedowns when he's, when he needs to, um, he had, you know, decent takedowns against, uh, Shabazian, but look, he only scored 97 in that fight. Um, Vittori did have two takedowns uh, in the five round fight. So the fight I look back to is the Curtis fight, this last one. Um, first of all, he got zero takedowns against Strickland. I mean, zero. Um, Curtis has good takedown defense, but her Hermanson just found that he was going to be able to just kind of just stay at range and, and pick them apart, sort of, you know, he went for a lot leg kicks, leg kicks. He had, he had the jab working. He had a very nice, comfortable decision. And I think that that's probably what he's going to end up doing here. Um, so Hermanson as a favorite for me, again, I think he's just going to get asked. Um, that's, that's going to be me. Uh, let's look at the Delizzi side though. So Delizzi at this price, you look at his inside the distance prop and it's, it's very similar to some of the guys we talked to earlier. You have Delice inside the distance is he's plus like 330. Okay, so it's not really plus 300 like these other guys. Like remember uh, Levy, not Levy, uh, Valdez and Rojo, but it's fair enough. Um, the problem here is that his price is be is is more than these other guys. So I think Delice is going to be a pass. And and the other thing about Delice is that. As I mentioned, Herman Sane is not really showing up as such a great play. So as a result, he's not going to be that popular. So you don't get the same type of leverage with Delice. So he's probably going to be, you know, if I get to some of him just to be diverse, um, maybe. But he definitely the internals are not are not as good um, as some of these other guys. All right. Um, just a couple more fights. So here is where I think this, this, this really should be the main event. I mean, this is this is an awesome fight. You have heavyweights Pavlovich versus Tai Tuivasa, 9K versus 7,200. Right? So what do you need to be 9K? Well, you need probably about even money, you know, inside the distance, maybe a little less. And you look at Pavlovich. I mean, let's look at this. Let's go. Like, first of all, He's inside the distance is minus 130. And not only that, you have Pavlovich winning in round one is like minus 110. Okay. So, so this is, you just cannot avoid this. I mean, this is, when I say can't avoid it, that doesn't mean you can't, you have to play it, but you can't avoid that this is, the, this is a tremendous play, right? Um, he's going to be owned. But this is a, a tremendous play. Um, now, on the other hand, okay, you have Tai Tuivasa, who at 7K, no, at 7,200, look at his inside the distance prop. Now, remember, compared to these other guys that were like plus 300, Tuivasa inside the distance is plus 240. I mean, let's go. This is exactly what you need from an underdog, especially at this price. So, You've, I mean, this is why I consider this the main event. I mean, I think you have to have this. And I don't think you need to have any of the fights after. I, no, I shouldn't say that. Well, we'll talk about them. But if, if listen, if you're, this is like a weird take, but if you're like a, um, if you are a, um, whatchamacallit, if you're older and, you know, you don't feel like staying up till two in the morning, just treat this, just treat this card as like a uh, 13, 12 fight card. Consider this the main event, and then hopefully you have enough points you can just go to sleep, right? I mean, obviously that's not going to actually happen, but um, yeah, so you definitely need to have both sides of this fight. All right, now we're moving on to, again, what I consider three kind of boring possible fights, but we'll, we'll take a look at it. So we have Mateus Nicolau against Matt Schnell. Mateus Nicolau is 9,400. So we, we've talked about this, right? So to have, to be 9,400, what's that? Um, wait one second. Right. 
So to be 9,400, you need to have at least even money inside the distance. But you really need more than that. You need also like kind of take down upside, you know? Um, and Mateus Nikolau, I mean, we look at it. I mean, look at this inside the distance prop. Nikolau inside the distance is like plus 140. That's not really good at that price. Um, I mean, let's see if we can invent some some uh, takedown upside maybe, but not really. So for me, I mean, it's just a pass. Um, now, now let's look at Schnell on the other side. I mean, he's plus 350, so he's probably – Probably not worth playing, but let's just take a look at his inside the distance prop. Like if his inside the distance prop is maybe even plus five hundred, maybe maybe that's worth it. Let's see. Schnell inside the distance. Where is it? It's like plus nine hundred or something. So this to me, this fight's just a pass. I'll just hope I have enough points. So this is the, the last. This this next fight, second the co-main event. This fight's really annoying. All right, so you have. Rafael Dos Anjos, he is 9,600. So this is the highest priced fighter on the card. So, boy, oh boy, what do you need for 9,600? You need, you need both. I mean, really, you, you need an inside the distance prop, or probably over even money, and a massive takedown upside, which, which is, remember, we already have this from John Pierce. And he's even cheaper. So for Dos Anjos to be kind of playable, he's got to have like very similar to Pierce. And and he just doesn't have it. I mean, we'll take a look at the inside the distance prop. I know it's like, you know, you, you say, oh, you're being so greedy. You need all this. But in a big, big card like this, this is what you need. Yeah. Um, Dos Anjos inside the distance is, what is he? Um takes so long to find these things here. Maybe I should be better prepared. Dos Anjos. All these are... All right, Dos Anjos, inside the distance. Boy, oh boy. Then they have all, they have all these... You just have to trust me. But you know what? Oh, there it is. Uh, so is inside the distance plus 200. I mean, I don't care what his takedown upside is. At plus 200, it, it just, it's just never going to work at 9,600. It's just never going to work. Um, he's going to have to get, you know, 10 takedowns. You know what I mean? Like he's going to have to get 10 takedowns or, or, or you know, he, he could get the finish. I mean, it happens sometimes in addition to all these takedowns, but – I just can't get there. I don't know what to tell you at 9,600. So um, he's a pass. And then Barbarina, um, you know, he's just a hundred, you know, he's a minus he's a plus 400 underdog. He's just, it's not going to do it. You know, um, him inside the distance is plus 7 million. He doesn't really have takedown upside either. So this fight to me, it's just a pass. So now you get to the main event. Uh, Kevin Holland versus Stephen Thompson, and you know the pricing is 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 reasonable, right? You have Holland is eighty five hundred, Thompson seventy seven hundred, and you do have five rounds to work with, which is you know, which is big. I mean, especially for someone like Thompson, right? Because Thompson he's going to get his fantasy points based on like a lot of volume and just strikes. You know, he's he's not going to. We'll get to this, but he's his his win condition is not really knocking out Kevin Holland. It's just being more technical and and over five rounds. I mean, he's going to need all of them. You know what I mean? Like like for him to get there at seventy eight hundred, even seventy seven hundred, he's going to need all those fantasy points. He's going to need like five rounds of strikes, um, sort of like he did when he beat Jeff Neal. So when he beat Jeff Neal, we'll, we'll pull that up. Um. He had a hundred, he had a hundred fantasy points. And who's this guy? He had a hundred fantasy points and it took him, you know, and he basically took him all five rounds to do it, you know? Um, so, 
and that's that's his that that's his win condition, and that's what uh, and that's what he's going to need. Okay. Um, wait one sec. It's good to me. Um. So yeah, Kevin Hollins. Let's take a look at him. At eighty seven hundred, oops. At eighty, oh, eighty five hundred. I mean, he's going to need. Uh, he's got five rounds to work with too. Maybe a plus two hundred. Maybe more inside the distance. I mean, let's take a look at it though. Um, hold on. How an inside the distance is. As usual, towards the end of these videos, my my screen starts to. How inside the distance is plus one six one fifty? Actually, that's not bad. Yeah, I think that's not bad. Maybe, maybe I sold I sold this um, maybe I sold this uh this fight short a little bit. Um, I do think that Holland the you know that that inside the distance prop I think is fair enough at that price. Um, uh. He also does have some takedown upside. It's more, it's kind of more narrative driven than anything else. I mean, because it seems to be that that's the way you're supposed to fight Stephen Thompson, and it is. He hasn't really shown all that much takedown upside uh, every once in a while, but I think that Holland would prefer to just kind of show that he can outstrike Thompson if you want to know the truth. But um, uh, so I guess this is a better fight than I thought. And I, boy, oh boy am I really going to have to stay up to watch this? I really hope not. I really hope it's have a massive score for my fight for my fights that don't have this. And then I'll just kind of just go to bed, you know, and just presume I win. Or ugh, I guess I'm gonna have to play this on. I mean, Thompson, he's he's basically well, he's plus two twenty or whatever he is. I mean, that's not English, plus one fifty. And his win condition is probably ninety points. Ugh. I, I don't know. I, I guess I have to play a little bit of this main event crap. I was hoping to get my narrative going that, you, you know, you just can stop the fight, have to stop the card after Pavlovich to Ivasa. But no, I think you got to play some of this. So overall, we did identify some fights to to fade. We did identify some some favorites to fade. Um, we did identify some, some uh, a, I think, a decent underdog pool. Um, and I think that you're in position to take some shots. It's going to be a very difficult card to win. Whenever you have 15 fights, you could do the math. I mean, you gotta, you know, you gotta get like a lot, right. Um, and, but, you know, I do think that you could catch the optimal by yourself this week without, without like going completely bananas. Um, you don't like have to leave money on the table and stuff like that. Um, you could, but I think that you can just kind of make good plays, honestly. And, and 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 kind of get there this week. And I think we identified a, a decent amount of them. So with that said, good luck and um hope you guys win.